What's up guys, Dr. Nick here. Do you have a child that struggles with sleep? Maybe they're getting ready for bed and they've been playing hard all day and you feel like they should just get home and crash and the bedtime routine comes around and they're still wired. They're still going 90 miles an hour and you're like, what's going on? I feel like they should just crash and go to sleep and they don't. Or maybe your kids are getting up in the middle of the night or they're having night terrors or they're waking up super early or not getting wake, not waking up feeling rested. Maybe you are the one that's struggling with sleep as a parent. Maybe you lay down at bed tonight or at night and you feel like you, sh you should just be falling right asleep, but you can't shut your brain off. Your mind is just going a million miles an hour and you're, or you're tossing and turning all throughout the night and you wake up in the morning and you feel like you haven't slept at all. Well, if that's you, uh, we want to dig into why that is. We want to find the root cause of the problem because sleep is the, literally the foundation of our health. And no matter what health issues you, you or some, one of your kids may be struggling with, whether it's chronic immune issues or digestive issues, or maybe it's behavior related, we all know that when we lose sleep, we're way more agitated than what we would be if we get a good night's rest. If that's you or your, or your child, this is gonna be a video that you're gonna to wanna to watch and pay attention to. Uh, in my experience in dealing with, uh, especially kids and, and uh, with that struggle with sleep, but adults too, um, we usually try all different types of remedies to get a good night's sleep. You know, up here are some of the things that a lot of people ha usually try, especially the natural, more naturalistic or holistically try is, you know, essential oils. Uh, melatonin is a popular supplement or, or that people tr usually take. Um, having a good strict bedtime routine, weighted blankets, uh, magnesium, all of those different uh, supplements like that are typically used to help improve sleep. And while those things can prove to be beneficial and important in uh, achieving better sleep, uh, more sound sleep, and waking up and feeling rested, uh, there's oftentimes still not, those things still don't get you quite to the solution as to why you're not sleeping. And they oftentimes don't fix the complete issue that leaves you to where you're sleeping better, you're getting a little better sleep, but you're still not quite fully there. And, and as I stated there earlier, sleep is so important in, in kickstarting your health. If you want to try something that is literally free to get you into a better state of health and wellness, getting an adequate, proper, good sound night's sleep is a, one of the most important things that you can do to start that process. And if you're not, and if you've tried some of these things that we just pointed out here, and there still seems to be something standing in the way of a good night's sleep for you or your kids, then we want to dig a little bit deeper. And, and that way that we do that is really looking at the central nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain. The central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. And the central nervous system controls everything in our body. It controls the production of melatonin, for instance, in our body. The central nervous system is in charge of everything. So if we dig down and we dig down to the deepest depths of any health issue, we want to make sure that the central nervous system is balanced. The central nervous system is functioning like it was designed to. So I really want to break down what the central nervous system is and, and how it operates. And on the most fundamental level, your central nervous system really has two different modes to it. Okay, The first mode is known as the sympathetic side of the nervous system. I think of that, if you, if you relate the nervous system to driving a vehicle, uh, the sympathetic side of the nervous system would be like the gas pedal. That's the accelerator. That's that's what is causing our physiology to go, 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 our nervous system to be, to be busy, to be active. Um, you know, and oftentimes, if you think about the accelerator of a car, um, that's going to make it very hard to, to rest and, and relax and, and sleep uh, when your nervous system is in fight or flight mode. And that's how our body's designed. If we're in a scenario, that's why it's called fight or flight. If we are in a stressful environment, our nervous system, our brain kicks on the gas pedal. It kicks into fight or flight because our brain and our nervous system is preparing to fight or flight. We wouldn't need to rest and digest or sleep if our nervous system is thinks that we're fighting or flighting. Now, that's a great side of the nervous system to have, and it's a great thing that our, that our, how our body was designed because if I'm getting ready to fight or flight, if I'm in a stressful environment, 
I want my nervous system to invest all of the energy to my muscles so I can fight or flight, which is great. But if we stay in fight or flight, that's where things can become a bit sticky. See, we don't want to always be on the gas pedal. We want to be on the gas pedal when necessary. And then once we get out of that stressful environment, we want the nervous system to turn on to the other mode, which is the parasympathetic side of the nervous system. That's where our body and our physiology is resting, restoring, relaxing, digesting. Our immune system is, is thriving when we're in rest and digest and operating at full capacity. So the, and, and I've, I like to think of that as like the brake pedal of the vehicle. That's where your, your car is coming to a stop. You're slowing down, you're resting. Those RPMs are coming down on the tachometer when you are applying the brake because we're kicking off the gas pedal and we're engaging the brake pedal. So as it relates to sleep, when we're in fight or flight, you're gonna generally have poor sleep. You're not gonna be able to turn your brain off. Your brain's gonna be busy. Your kids' brains are gonna be busy and active. They're not gonna be winding down for bedtime because their nervous system thinks they're getting ready to fight and flight, all right? Now on the other side of that, if the nervous system is engaging those breaks and you are, then your body, your nervous system, your physiology is gonna be producing melatonin more adequately. Your body is going to be able to rest and restore and re relax and, and all of those things associated with the parasympathetic brake pedal aspect of the nervous system. So the key to all of this is maintaining balance. You want to have a good balance between the gas pedal and the brake pedal. We all go through stress in life. We're going to need that gas pedal at, at various times throughout our life. But our ability to release the gas pedal and apply the brakes is what is crucial for sleep especially both for kids, for babies, okay? I see a lot of parents that are just zombie-eyed because their kids don't sleep, they don't sleep. They play all day, they go to bed, they're up at four and they're just going, 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 going all day, all day. And that is typically a result of a sympathetic dominant nervous system as opposed to a good balance to the nervous system. So we in our office, we can measure some of these scans. We can measure the, the balance of the nervous system with some of the insight scans that we do in our office. In fact. One scan in particular called heart rate variability is literally measuring how the nervous system is spending most of its time. Is it spending too much time on the gas pedal? Is it spending too much time on the brake pedal? Or do you have a good balance between those aspects of the nervous system? Now, as it's related, we all think of stress in life as like stress at work, right? Well, you know, when you talk about kids, especially with sleep, they don't have stress at work. Um, but there's many different aspects of stress, like the birth process and uh, stress at school and kids learning how to walk and fall and playing sports and all the physical ac uh, aspects of life that put stress on our body. And when we as neurologically focused chiropractors, when we assess the spine, most people relate chiropractic to the back. Um, it's not because you have bones back there. It's because your spine protects your central nervous system. So when we assess your spine, we're assessing the functionality of the central nervous system. And with some of those scans that I referenced earlier, if we find that the nervous system is stuck in fight or flight, oftentimes that correlates with uh, exactly what we said, a kid that can't sleep, a parent that can't sleep, a kid that just is on the gas pedal going 100 miles an hour all day and then should crash and go to sleep, but they don't, they're wound up. They don't go through that bedtime routine real well. Those bedtimes are a struggle. Maybe they have night terrors um, quite often and they're up throughout the middle of the night. They're not getting sound sleep at night because the nervous system is spending too much time on the gas pedal. So chiropractically speaking, when we assess the spine and we find that there's stress and tension in the nervous system that oftentimes correlates with poor sleep, our objective is not to treat sleep. Our objective is to balance the nervous system. When we apply neurologically focused chiropractic care, we are influencing the parasympathetic side of the nervous system. We are pumping the brakes. We are taking a busy brain, a fight or flight dominant nervous system, and we're pumping the brakes. We're helping the nervous system rest, relax, digest, restore, and that leads to a great night's sleep. In fact, that's one of the first things that is most common for us to see as chiropractors, especially with kids, is parents start to say, hey, my kid's sleeping better. You know, maybe they didn't even come in with an issue of sleep. Maybe it was something completely different. But parents will report that, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're sleeping sound all night. You know, I, I just have a little kid uh, that um, started care a month or two ago. 
And uh, one of the things that his parents commented on is usually the parents would have to like tiptoe past his bedroom at night uh, because he was a very light sleeper. He would wake up and just be up uh, if they tiptoed past the bed or past his bedroom at night. Um, and since starting care, they've noticed that, you know, he's just out. Once he falls asleep, he's out. They don't have to tiptoe. Uh, there's sound. The dog's making sound out in the living room. And normally they'd be like, oh, sh we can't wake him up. Um, but he just sleeps through the night now. There's no getting up. There's no light sleep. Uh, and that equates to a balanced nervous system. That equates to them getting a more sound sleep. Uh, and that's the goal. That's the goal that we want is better sleep is going to equate to better health. So if this video makes sense to you, please share it with other people. I, I think that everybody, uh, a lot of people struggle with sleep, in my opinion, and in my experience. So if this is something that you would like to learn more about, please send us a message. Give us a call. We'd love to talk more about, about it with you, and we'll talk to you next time.